This week has just been the gift that keeps on giving, and by gift I mean pure hell and disappointment. Because if the VGAs, the Game Awards, if those weren't enough, PSX is back here and uh, <laughs> it's disappointing as it was last year. Actually, probably more disappointing than it was last year. Now, we start this keynote off with a trailer for Uncharted 4 and you might be thinking, hey, that sounds really familiar and that's what I thought. I had to record this twice because I'm like, wow, fuck, did I make this video already? No. No, I did not make this video already because you are not mistaken. This is the exact same way that the VGA started out the other night. And this trailer, I don't know how many Uncharted 4 trailers we have to see before we've seen enough. Because if anything, this is just making me like less excited about the game and to see all these trailers. Just having it forced in my face so much. Like, get excited, get excited, get excited. You know what? Like, if anything, it's making me less excited. All right, next up we have Final Fantasy VII Remake. Remake meaning a brand new version of the game, not a PC port, which was one of the most pathetic moments of last year's PSX. <laughs> but this year we get to see gameplay of Final Fantasy VII Remake, and uh, to be completely honest, I am not impressed by it at all. I don't think it graphically looks that impressive, and I saw people making jokes on Slash V uh, calling it FF7 FPS because of how fucking bad the frame rate was and the combat sequence is shown. But keep in mind that this is a very, very early demo of this game. I'm sure it's a very early build, the game, pre-alpha, alpha, or whatever it may be. Um, as someone who I have little to no interest in Final Fantasy games, I am not a huge fan of turn-based games. There are very few true turn-based games that pique my interest. The only Final Fantasy game that I've ever really been interested in was, was Versus way back when, and that's now been turned into Final Fantasy XV, which, speaking of that game, I believe that Final Fantasy VII Remake is running on the same engine as Final Fantasy XV, which begs the question, is this a traditional turn-based game? I think it might not be, based on what we saw in the trailer. I'll uh, try to dig a little bit more research into that and find out if it is indeed truly turn-based or not. If it turns out to not be turn-based, I, uh, I would worry for the fan reception of that, as uh, they would prefer, I'm sure, a true turn-based uh, return to form for Final Fantasy. But uh, if it is a live-action game, a real-time action game, you'll definitely see me a little bit more interested in Final Fantasy VII Remake. I'll definitely be picking up both Final Fantasy XV and VII just out of pure, morbid curiosity. Probably make some videos about them on the channel coming from someone who is not a huge Final Fantasy fan. Uh, side note, do not be surprised if this Final Fantasy VII Remake gets delayed into oblivion or like falls off the face of the earth because if you keep up with the modern incarnation of Square Enix, you would know that they do not have their shit together, and they don't know what the fuck they're doing, and the games look completely different, or they disappear like Final Fantasy Versus did, and then they come back as something different. Do not be surprised if this is drastically changed, disappears, or like gets cancelled or some shit. Do not be surprised if that happens in the slightest. Also, it's worth mentioning that the terminology that they're using around this Final Fantasy VII Remake is a little bit confusing. They're suggesting that it'll make its console debut on PlayStation 4, which, when they use that terminology, leads me to believe that a PC release simultaneously is not out of the question, and an Xbox One release further down the line once the exclusivity period wears out on console is also not out of the question. So. Uh, don't be too concerned about this if you're an Xbox or PC player. You probably will get to play this Final Fantasy VII Remake somewhere down the line, similar to how Xbox One got artificial exclusivity on Tomb Raider, Rise of the Tomb Raider, earlier this year. Okay, this next part of the, of the keynote is probably a part that most people would skip and just not fucking talk about, but we have to talk about it here on this channel because this woman comes on stage and she, she's doing the same Star Wars salesman, saleswoman act in this case that we saw the other night at the VGA Awards. Aren't you guys fucking sick and tired of Star Wars? I know I am, and this is coming from someone... I've seen Star Wars, I've watched Star Wars so many times, have so much Star Wars stuff. I used to love Star Wars, but now, just the constant bombardment of Star Wars, EA Dice Star Wars, EA, you know, Disney Star Wars, just, 
oh my god, fucking, it's enough, please, just please stop. She comes on there, she talks about Battlefront, which at this point, I don't think Battlefront is relevant at all, and then she talks about Disney Infinity, Star Wars, EA, Disney Edition, uh, I don't think anyone gives a fuck about that who is over the age of 10, uh, so the Star Wars Salesman Act, it's it's here. I know Disney, like I said, you got to make that $4 billion back somehow, but can't you be a little bit more discreet about it? Just a little bit more discreet about it? I know it's, it's hard. I know it's hard to do. Those condoms, they're not going to sell themselves. Then Randy Pitchford comes on stage from Gearbox, the creators of Borderlands, and they, uh, they've been working on Battleborn for quite some time now, if I'm not mistaken. Battleborn, have, it's been around for a while now. They've been putting a lot of work into it. It's a first-person shooter MOBA uh, kind of combo thing. If you've watched any footage of Blizzard's new game Overwatch, it's it's not too dissimilar from that. However, I think Blizzard's game looks far more interesting than this. We get some gameplay uh, of this, and there's some exclusive content. Some exclusive content for PlayStation, guys. Uh, PlayStation players will be getting one extra character for Sony Beta. 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 Game is powered by Namco. It's Ridge Racer. Ridge Racer. Remember that one? All right, so let me, uh, let me go right ahead, get right into the game. Oh, this brings back memories. I don't know if it's just me, but here we go. Whoops. Now, now getting off of that, the they they show this extra character and you know i have xbox and playstation but i would probably play this game on xbox just so i don't have to hear this character's voice because this character has some of the most obnoxious voice acting i've ever heard in a video game right up there with the main character from final fantasy 10 some of the most obnoxious voice acting i've ever heard you know what let's let's listen if you don't believe me courage optimism Rivers of Blood! Teamwork! Arc mine out! Deploying force field! I am become death! Destroyer of worlds! Gaze upon Toby in despair! Death machine! You know, I really don't think it could get any worse than that, any more obnoxious than that. I don't think it's possible. Uh... Oh my my! It looks like you're already choking. Two minutes. I'll finish you in two minutes. Oh, I actually... I stand corrected. Uh, but this is Street Fighter V. This game is a pseudo-exclusive to PlayStation 4. It is an exclusive on console only. It will be on PC, on Steam, presumably. But on console, you're going to have to have a PlayStation 4 to play Street Fighter V. I have no interest in Street Fighter V, but Street Fighter V has a huge fan base, and I'm sure that the fans will love this. I'm glad that I don't like Street Fighter, because I don't think I could sit through one match of uh, this character and if, if this character beat me, I think I'd have to uh, throw my controller out the window. Then they go on to show a mega ass load of, of indie games, and none of them look particularly unique or interesting to me. None of them are piquing my interest at all. And to me, indie games were supposed to be small, like, appetizers, right? Small appetizers that every once in a while are a pleasant surprise. But to sell a console... And, and show off indie games as if, you know, this is the reason I bought a PlayStation 4, this is a reason to buy a PlayStation 4, seems a little bit silly to me. And all these games, if they have exclusivity on PlayStation 4, they're also on PC. So that doesn't really excite me in any way. And I'm not trying to knock on indie games. You know, there's there's been many great indie games, but if I'm going to criticize AAA games for being samey or being gray and brown shooters, then I'm, you're sure as hell can bet that I'm going to criticize indie games for being samey too. I mean, how many more of these two-dimensional ass looking, you know, side scrollers do we need to have before we can decide that we've probably played enough of those? 
Uh, I don't know, but it doesn't seem like they're going away anytime soon, and PlayStation seems to be living up to that whole indie station meme, for sure. And then they have this demo of, of PlayStation VR, and the demo is, is terrible, it looks bad. I understand that it's hard to demo something that you, you wear on your face, but looking just purely at the footage, it, it just... I'm getting flashbacks here. I'm getting Wonderbook PlayStation Move flashbacks. I can't be the only one. It's like, how does wearing this on your face make PlayStation Move more interesting than it wasn't way back when? Um, also, uh, the crowd like was not very receptive to it at all. They weren't enjoying it. The chat wasn't enjoying it either, and I certainly wasn't enjoying it. And then they, they go on to show a ton of... Uh, games for PlayStation VR, some of them new, some of them not. Uh, most of them, if not all of them, uh, just confirming what I what I talked about in my last video about VR, which I'll, I'll link here, but I was basically saying that these games on PlayStation VR at least, uh, not Oculus, but PlayStation VR, since the PlayStation 4 is kind of inadequately powered to do VR, the games will either look like shit graphically and run fine or vice versa and here are all these games some of them are indie games some of them aren't indie games but nonetheless they all look like shit graphically but the so the frame rate can be acceptable which you know i'm glad they they're taking that path it's better have that and make people not motion sick than have the games look decent and run at 10 frames a second uh, then they, they come on stage and they have this demo for, for Res, which you might remember, really old uh, music game, uh, like a weird-ass, kind of like LSD Dream Emulator with music, but um, LSD Emulator, that would be a good title to get for PlayStation VR. <laughs> but uh, it, this Res demo looked really gimmicky, looked fucking stupid. They had the creator was wearing this, like, uh light suit apparently it was the creators wearing this light suit you know dancing around on stage it looked like that um like that tokyo robot restaurant or some bullshit like that very gimmicky very silly looking and then we have this ubisoft demo for a game where you uh fly around as a bird again very gimmicky very disinteresting looking all of these games if you're noticing a theme here seem um they're either not games or they're incredibly gimmicky and one-dimensional like this next one this there's this zombie uh taxi driver game i mean this is just laughably bad just laughably bad looking this is this is what we're paying 500 dollars for for a headset um you know, call me crazy for saying that that is a waste of money. Uh, and then uh, the last VR game. Oh, Jesus Christ, here we go. 100 Foot Robot Golf. 100 Foot Robot Golf! Which, oh, it's so funny. So funny. So silly. You know, I, I don't think they should be laughing when they don't have a... It's okay to have a silly indie game or something like that, but it seems like that's all they're, they're selling and marketing with PSVR. Not a single one of these games seems to be a deep or worthwhile game that's worth spending 400 to $500 on. This Robot Golf, it looks shitty, it looks janky. Once again, I'm getting Wonderbook flashbacks. It's just so forced and, and shitty looking. Uh, uh, call me an asshole, call me skeptical, but 100 foot robot golf, no thanks, not gonna pay $500 to play 1000 foot robot golf. Uh, then they come on stage and they announce uh, Destiny Sparrow Racing, and you, you wouldn't guess it from how much I shit on Destiny on this channel, but I actually play a lot of Destiny. I've played like at least 500 hours of Destiny, probably, probably more, you know, I play the raids the day they come out, all that bullshit, but... Destiny Sparrow Racing. Now this, this is, I'm not upset about Destiny Sparrow Racing. I don't think it's, I think it's a little stupid to have on stage at PSX as a big reveal, but in, and for, for Destiny, it's, it's a, it's a nice move. Um, people have been asking for Sparrow Racing and Destiny on, on Reddit, uh, for quite some time now. It's a fan requested thing. And it's good to see that they're appeasing the fans and taking fan ideas and turning it into content. But, uh, in terms of having this at a big PSX event, at a big keynote, it seems so fucking stupid. I mean, this is like a little, this is like a little community thing, like the Destiny Halloween thing. It should just be a nice little surprise, not 
some kind of big reveal or something to f freak out about. And uh, it's also worth noting that it's not a PlayStation exclusive. There are a few PlayStation exclusive items that you'll be able to obtain in the Sparrow Racing mode, sort of like how PlayStation had Hawkmoon last year and now the Jade Rabbit Scout Rifle. So a couple exclusive items, probably nothing groundbreaking, but um, it will be on Xbox as well. And it's only a three-week event, Sparrow Racing, but uh, from what I gather online, people were saying uh, it's a three-week event, but once a, once a month, which is a little odd, but uh, I'm not sure why it's time-gated in this manner. Uh, uh, maybe they're going to add more content every month to it, but uh, Sparrow Racing, a good step in the right direction for Bungie, but probably not something worth having on stage. And when this is one of the more noteworthy things about your press conference, uh, that's probably a bad sign. And, uh, oh yeah, I forgot, Adam Boys, PlayStation guy, he goes on there, he's like, who's my warlocks up here? He f fucking likes warlocks, fucking typical. I also have to mention that they, they showed uh, that Yakuza 5 and Yakuza 0 are going to be localized for US release with um, one of the games coming out very shortly on, on Tuesday. Uh, I do not know much about the Yakuza series. I've been meaning to play a Yakuza game for quite some time. They're, they're very uh, talked about online, a lot of... People love those games. Meaning to check that out. This might be the opportunity to check that out. Uh, you know, good announcement. Good to see that they're bringing over some games that people want. Localize them. Get them translated. There's this this Ratchet and, and Clank game. Very confusing to me. Is this is this a remake? What is it? Um, the game itself doesn't look very interesting to me. It looks the same as the previous Ratchet and Clank games. Um, I assume that this is more for the movie tie-in, the movie that's coming out on a in April, but uh, I do have to give them some credit here, uh, Insomniac Games, for not fucking this up, because this would have been really easy to make a piece-of-shit tie-in movie game and then have this movie come out and have it be shitty. Uh, they have creative control over the movie. The movie looks like the game, uh, the same voice actors as the game. Nintendo should really be taking notes here. This is what I was talking about when I was saying making games and movies and making properties like a Marvel Cinematic Universe, not because that's necessarily what I personally want to play and enjoy, it's because it's not, but in, in terms of a business strategy, this is this is the way to do it. Um, everyone else should be taking notes. Anyone who has a ubiquitous property that uh, can appeal to an audience on a level more than just a game, anyone who has an iconic character should be taking notes of what they're doing here because this is the way to do it. Uh, the last thing that I found uh, worth talking about was Nino Kuni 2. Um, Nino Kuni, uh, Wrath of the White Witch, I believe, the last, the first game in the Nino Kuni series. Uh, beautiful art style, beautiful Ghibli uh, art style. Did not like the game at all. The actual gameplay, not a fan of it at all. Uh, the story was good, art style good, but the actual gameplay, not a fan of it. Uh, Nino Kuni 2 looks to be following in the same footsteps as Nino Kuni 1 in terms of art style, uh, atmosphere, you know, that childish Ghibli storyline. Uh, I can't see myself picking this game up, I assuming that the combat and gameplay are the same. Uh, probably not going to be interested in this title, but uh, it, it's good to see uh, a game like this, a little bit of an underrated game in many people's opinions, uh, coming out with a sequel and being a big announcement. A lot of people are going to be happy about Nino Kuni 2. Overall, I'm feeling very, very underwhelmed by this PSX conference, even more underwhelmed than I was last year at the first PSX. Uh, seems like none of these announcements uh, are really noteworthy to me, N none of this getting me excited. Um, if anything, it's making me confirm my prejudice against PlayStation VR even more than I already had. Uh, none of the VR games look interesting at all, they all look gimmicky to me. Um, a ton of indie games that kind of look dime a dozen, maybe one or two of them will be worth playing. Um, overall, just not a very good press conference. Kind of the cherry on top of the, the shit Sunday that was the uh, video game awards the other day. Um, hopefully, uh, Sony is... I, I don't know what they're doing, because when you go out of your way to have a press conference like this, they are the at which they are the only members, you kind of put a big red target on yourself because you're setting up the stage to disappoint people when you don't have anything like they did uh, this PSX. And they had really not that much at E3. Uh, they didn't go to Gamescom. They did that Paris Games Week thing where they had a couple couple games, but they're, they're not here. Uh, like that uh, Detroit Become Human, not here. 
uh, at this PSX event. Uh, I don't know what they're doing. I don't know what their, their pipeline is for the near future. 2015, not the best year for Sony uh, in terms of exclusives. Uh, the Order 1886, kind of a, a bomb, a dud, if you will. Bloodborne, fantastic game, best game of the year, in my opinion. Uh, really the only good PlayStation exclusive that they really have going for them right now. Hopefully Uncharted 4 will fill that void, because they're really banking on that. And if Uncharted 4 fails, um, they're not going to be in a great position. So hopefully at E3, uh, later down the line, Sony has some more uh, exciting news more imminent games coming out that'll uh, pique my interest a little bit more, maybe satisfy the fans, because the fans were not too happy with this PSX event. Uh, just a little bit of browsing on Slash V, a little bit of browsing on the comments, reading the chat while watching the live keynote. Uh, fans were not too receptive of this. Uh, a lot of people feel the way that I do, not much worthy of note.